I bought this old Troy built rototiller used about 10 years ago. I think the thing is probably 35 years old now. And um, last year I started noticing that the uh, the thing wasn't telling it so good. So decided to go for a new set of tines this year. So this is kind of a video replacing the tines on it. You know, I started by bringing it up in my shop and um, I've got that Presto lift I put it up on to work on. I like to, uh, you know, put it up on the air on that to a comfortable position. You can see I had some safety straps just in case the hydraulic line should ever break on the lift or anything. And, you know, a couple tie downs for the, um, for the tiller. And then I went out and got some gear oil. And, you know, it's time for an oil change too. So I picked up some oil for it. And, um, one of the tires had real bad cracks and leaks, so I got a tube, and then I bought some tiller tines off of Amazon. They're um, an aftermarket tine, but they were like one-third or one-quarter of the price of the original ones, so um, I decided to give them a try. So, you know, this is basically, you know, how you have to, what you have to go through to change the tines on a Troy built tiller. You know, so once I got it up, I got the um, the right hand side there cleaned off. You can see the left still has to be done, but um, you know, basically it's a pretty easy job switching out the tines on this. Um, there you can see that the old tines they're all bent and twisted, and there's approximately a seven inch gap in the center of them between the tines. So that's probably a good deal of my problem. You can see how they're all worn out and bent. So all you have to do is um, you know loosen up the actually. You really only have to take out one bolt on the set of tines and then loosen up three other bolts and they come right off. Um, so here it is, you know, basically just using a, a little impact gun to remove the first set. And that's, that's one of the Harbor Freight uh, 3 8 drive impact guns that I bought probably 15 years ago, I think. And it's a real handy little, you know, $6, $7 item to have around. And the thing's worked flawlessly since I got it, so I've been real happy with it. So here's, um, you know, you take the first, the outer set off, and then just a matter of going back through. Same thing on the inner set. Um, so they're not really bolted to the... To the um, tiller at all they're just kind of wrapped around the cast iron housings there and you'll kind of get a better look at that in a second now, this is really the first you know major thing i've had to do to this tiller in the 10 years that i've owned it so um you know it's been a really reliable tiller um there's what they look like when you take them off and um you can see how they're worn and pointed tips and stuff and they're the replacement tines what they look like um i don't like the idea that the replacement tines actually have extra holes you see there's an extra set of holes there for different applications and i think that may be a weak point in the future uh where they could possibly bend but we'll find out so, you know, you just have to clean out all those grooves that the tines go in and make sure that you look at how the original ones came off. Um, it's kind of, the, you know, you have to make sure that they're in the right direction with the cutting edge facing the right way. So um, it's best to you know, take a good look at the one you're removing before you and put together the stack of new ones before you remove them. So the same thing, you know, putting them back together, you just, uh, I put three bolts in and I got the stack roughly started and then you just slide the last bolt in there and then when you go back and you tighten them up it actually uh, pulls them very tight on that casting and locks them down good so um, you know there's really nothing holding them to the casting other than those uh, grooves that they sit in which makes it a real easy you know way to change the tines and um, there's really nothing on the tiller to uh, have problems with getting bolts out later so you know you start by I started by putting the inside one on and now it's time to just go back and put the outside one on and just you know get everything in the the right direction and it's a pretty simple job doesn't take too long it's real nice having it up at a uh, comfortable working height too so you don't have to bend over and you know be on the ground working on it so there it is, you know, the second outer set is on. Same thing, just tighten them up. Um, these replacement tines from Amazon, they actually uh, fit really nice. They, they fit just like the originals. You know, they snugged on there real nice and tight, and they look like they were the right shape and everything. So um, I, I don't think they were too bad to buy. So once you, you know, there's what they, the first side looks like now. 
time to go over and just start cleaning out the other side here and um, getting out last year's uh, garden leftovers and get that cleaned up so I can start taking that side apart. And, you know, same thing here. Just, you know, remove remove one bolt, loosen the other three, and the, the set comes right off. Um, and match up the new the new uh, tines to look like the ones that you just took off and you know and then just put them back on now um, you'll see in the second once I put the uh, got all the new tines on that the um, the distance between them here has gone from seven inches down to about two and three quarters of an inch so um, it looks like that may have been my problem why I wasn't getting, you know, the center to rotate good and that center lever thing there was kicking up and stuff. So I got the tines changed over, put a little bit of PB Blaster in that spring to make that easier. And then it was time to just kind of just kind of swing it around so I could get at the other side and work on it. Um, this this is a side that has a tire on it that, um, that just won't hold air anymore. Um, it's got some really bad, you know, cracking in it and uh, splitting in it, but there's some tears in it and stuff, but nothing actually goes right through to the inside, so I figured just, you know, for getting another couple of years out of it, maybe I just try a, um, like a $7 tube instead of buying a $40 tire, so, you know, I get the, the wheel and tire off, there's a roll pin that you have to kind of sneak in behind the wheel there and just tap it out. And that actually um, slides right out. And having a set of these pin punches uh, from uh, these are Harbor Freight actually cost me about three dollars um, is a really handy thing to get these pins out. You can see that's a pretty big roll pin holding that on. Once you slide that out, the uh, the wheel pulls right off of there. I just started by ripping the valve off because I know I was putting putting a tube in there. And usually these small tires, you can just pop them right off the rims. Uh, but, man, I couldn't hammer it off, so I just figured I'd give it a quick squeeze and a vice next, and it would pop apart. And um, just just couldn't break it loose. I guess um, it must have been on there for the 35 years, and after being outdoors and in the garden and everything, the, um, the tire, actually, the beat of the tire had rusted tightly onto the rim. So, um... It was real hard to get off, so I had to move some of that wood I brought down the other day just to be able to access my my little tire machine there from Harbor Freight. And you know that once I I couldn't use a regular handle in it. I had to get a short piece of uh, steel bar to to use as a handle for it because I had the wood pile in the way. But you know once I got a handle in there, it popped it right off. Um, easy job to get both sides popped off, and then. You know, a couple tire irons to take it off. Um, this this tire though was a extremely um, stiff tire for a little little like thirty five year old tire like that. Um, it was a little bit of work to to get this one off. Usually you can pop them right off easy, but then inside of it, you know, there must have been some a lot of rust and stuff from over the years. So I just clean that out got that piece of the valve out blew it out and um, got the new tube out and I don't know they give you these instructions in like seven different languages but you don't really need them for a tube so um, you know the, the new tube was uh, it was just a, one of the generic tubes from tractor supply that I got but um, actually it was a pretty pretty stiff uh, rubber on the tube and it's you know a little bit chilly out here now too so um it took a couple minutes to to get the tube actually stuffed in the tire and um around the actual wheel so i could um get the, uh, the valve stem actually out the other side so, you know everything was just so stiff and uh, the tire was stiff and the tube was stiff and so it took a couple of minutes to to get everything in there right Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this holds for at least, you know, a couple of years. I don't know. I'll find out over time, but it seemed the easiest thing to do this year because I really didn't want to, you know, put a lot of money in it. 
So, you know, once you get the tube in there, you just got to get the stem through the hole. And then I just, you know, have this little stem puller that I hook on to, you know, hold everything in place until I get the, the tire back on. And just matter a couple tire irons and, um, you know, I had to work it on the floor. This was uh, really stiff. But uh, a couple minutes later and everything was all back together. So there it is, all you know, all ready to put some air in and um, just blow it up and get going again. Um, it kind of like I've said, this this tiller has been pretty amazing. I I bought it for a couple hundred dollars ten years ago, and it's basically run every spring. Um, just put some gas in it, pull the, put the choke on, pull the handle on it about two times. It starts and it just keeps on running i mean it does drip a little bit of oil and a little bit of grease and stuff but um it's just like the ever ready bunny so now i got the uh you know that tire kind of fixed and um just time to to drain out the oil i figured while i had it in here and get it ready for the season it's been probably two years since i've drained it so doesn't really see a lot of use but um you know just the sitting is not good So get the oil drained out and one just uses like pipe plugs for the oil and the oil filler so I put a little bit of um, Teflon tape on that uh, drain plug first to seal that back up and put that in and then um, put in the 30 weight oil it's, it's amazing though to me how much is 30 weight oil cost to buy nowadays um, used to be the cheapest stuff you could buy and now just trying to find it in a store is tough and then um, it's like four bucks a bottle for this stuff now so um, it's getting quite expensive so that actually the um, that eight horse or I think it's eight horsepower motor or maybe it's a seven horsepower Kohler it took a quart and a half of the um, 30 weight oil so that's all filled up and just let it down a little bit so I can remove that center screw that holds the handle in place. Um, that's how you get out, you uh, fill the oil on these things. So I like to just stick a screwdriver in there and um, find the level of it. You can pull that plug on the side, but I just uh, you know stick a screwdriver in and hold it up against the plug to see you know where the location is. So it was you know down a couple drops of oil, so I just figured I'd top it off for the year. And, um, you know, once you put the oil in, just put the handle back on. So it's really a, a pretty basic, uh, simple thing to do. And you have to make sure you use the GL5 rated oil in this thing, too, because it's got brass gears in it. So um, the other stuff just will eat the brass up. Now it's just, you know, all done. Just time to roll it off the lift and um, take it out to the garden. Just kind of waiting for the... Um, the rain to stop we're just flooded under here we've had so much rain this spring it's unbelievable so hoping to get out in the garden with it soon thanks for watching please subscribe